This is an impromptu video, but it is probably going to be very, very useful. It is inspired by one of the My Orchid Detail forms that I got through recently. When I was presented with the question of why won't this orchid bloom for me, and unless there's something seriously wrong with the orchid, which was not the case in this case, we would hear that the orchid needs more light in order for it to bloom. Now, light is all relative. My light down here in southern Spain, even though I'm growing in the northern hemisphere, is much harsher, much brighter than the light you may have in the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, you know, the four seasons hemispheres, but further north. So if I were to say put your orchid into direct sun or somebody were to suggest the same for me with an orchid that isn't blooming, I would have to know where are you growing because if I put an orchid into direct sun, uh, I could have some serious repercussions. And then of course there is the added variable of growing under artificial lights and you have the best lights in the world and your orchids are all thriving and doing well. Some are blooming and some are just reluctant to bloom. How much more artificial light bars are you going to add? what does that mean to increase the light levels well with artificial light it's pretty easy you can leave the orchid where it is but just raise her up a little bit higher so that the leaves are a little closer to the light but we don't want our orchids to burn now this is my Fios tuncumvillia and this is where it's going to come in my Fios tuncumvillia is an example of where I could show you sunburn, but I'm also showing you no humidity side effects and a lot of wind. So these leaves get thrashed around a lot, but we are late afternoon and the angle of the sun that is pounding on this leaf right here right now is exactly 45 degrees. And I am in southern Spain and I am always wary of my fires leaves burning. I try to keep them as nice for as long as possible. Now, never mind the differentials of light levels. Here's what I'm going to try and explain and hopefully get across as to how much is enough light for your orchids with a universal sense that we also all have, not just the visual, but I'm going to tell you about touch because I can tell you about heat and what is comfortable as you feel an orchid leaf that will give you the idea it's getting enough light to bloom as opposed to me telling you more light. This is how I also responded in that orchid form. So what you want to do in future, if you're not sure about your orchid getting enough light and being concerned about burning leaves, nobody wants that to happen. <clears throat> Wait for the next part. You want to be touching the leaves of your orchid that is not blooming and you suspect it's not getting enough light. Touch the leaves, get a feel for what those leaves feel like because if it's not getting enough light, it should not have any kind of temperature difference in your hand when you touch the leaf. Once you've raised that level of light, either put it into more direct sun, early morning sun, late afternoon sun, as we test out the parameters of what the orchid can handle. After 30 minutes, go and touch the leaves. And then you will feel either an increase in the temperature of the leaf in comparison to the previous touch you did when the orchid was where she's always been, or you won't feel a temperature increase. But she's getting enough light because now she's got more sun, or in the case of artificial light, the orchid has been raised up. If the temperature remains the same, you know that your orchid can handle even more light. So raise the orchid up or give her more extended hours of light, or even give her more hours of light during a warmer time period in your climate. And then after 30 minutes, touch the leaves again. If the first 30 minutes didn't warm up the leaf, come back and touch it again after 30 minutes, giving it a full hour and see what happens. But you see, once an orchid gets enough light to bloom, the leaf temperature will be warm not hot and your hand will be able to determine that before it was at room temperature no difference and some orchid leaves actually feel cool even while exposed to the sun and those are the super highlight lovers even though the sun is thrashing down on them they will actually feel cool it's quite remarkable but in the case of a non-blooming orchid temperature check is ideal if the leaf feels warm it's not going to burn now, we can also say as long as there's plenty of airflow, and that is, of course, very, very important. It cannot be cooking in the sun without any airflow because airflow cools the leaves down. You can see with my fires today, I have very minimal airflow, and the other days I have a lot more of it. But the angle of the sun right now being at its hottest late afternoon, coming down straight onto the surface of the leaf without any airflow, could burn it. 
But you can see how little airflow I've got and the leaf only has just a little more warmth to it than the ambient air. Under these circumstances, I can be pretty safe to say the leaf is not going to burn, it'll be all right. Again, other conditions may affect the health of this leaf long term, but for now, just based on the fact that this leaf is a teeny tiny bit warmer than my hand, and there's a little airflow, it's not going to burn. I have another example though, especially now seeing as the sun is starting to drop in the sky again, even though temperatures are high. And if you are growing under artificial lights, this will not apply to you. The only thing applies is keep raising that orchid higher and higher until you feel the leaves warm up. Come back after 30 minutes and check that they're not hot. You don't want a leaf to feel hot. And hot being, when you touch it, you're like going, yeah, that's uncomfortable for your hand. If that were to be the case, move the orchid back down to the first level that you raised it at and just occasionally check the temperature of the leaves. Any non-blooming orchid that needs more light with artificial lights, that is the way to go unless you have space where you can start including some sunshine as well. My beautiful Cattleya astraea. She lives on the top shelf of my blooming alley, whether she is in bloom or not. Very high light location, but for the past six, seven weeks, she has been in bright shade. Turns out, three days ago, I'm like, oh yes, okay. It was very, very windy, but that doesn't mean that the sun wasn't pounding on one of her leaves right here. And that's when I touched the leaf and I was not comfortable. The leaf was feeling warm, just like with the fires, but I was not comfortable with the fact that that leaf may or may not burn if I left the orchid where it was. And today, being an almost non-breezy day, definitely was I not going to leave her up there because even if the curtain would blow and then there would be shade on the leaf and then there would be sun again, who knows, with the piercing sun that we currently have, as well as the clear atmosphere that we currently have because that plays a big role as well when it comes to sunlight intensity, whether you've got like a foggy atmosphere even though the sun is shining or in the cities that we have smog where the sun is not as sharp and as penetrating because the smog acts like a buffer, then it is time to take the step and take the orchid away from that high light direct sun influence because what you don't want to do is be fretting every five, 10 minutes have you made a mistake mistake or have you misjudged. Move it into a shady place, that's why my Cattleya astraea for the time being is on my staging area because I was not comfortable with the leaf just being slightly warm, even though it wasn't hot. But I learned my lesson. That is why I moved astraea away because look at this. Oh boy. Oh yes. This is my Cattleya dawiana, one of the very few orchids that I have that actually never had an issue. No burnt leaves, no spotting, no pests, <laughs> no marks. And here we are. She also lived on the top shelf of my blooming alley and was doing great. <laughs> was. And then one day we had 39 degrees Celsius. One day. And I wasn't paying attention. And this leaf, when I saw it starting to brown, I was already way too late. But when I saw it starting to brown, I went up and I checked the leaf and it was hot to the touch. And this is where I'm saying the touch will tell you if you reach a leaf in time and it's super, super hot, take that orchid out of the sun. I was too late. My leaf already had a brownish tinge to it. And um, I kind of cooked my Dawiana even a little bit on the leaf in the back here. Thankfully, the new growth is looking fine. But that was the whole thing. This leaf was hot. It's like touching a stove hot. So the warmth of the Astraea before gave me pause to say, yeah, no, I'm not comfortable with this. Whereas another orchid, like the Rapiculus Lelia orchid, that is in the sun and the leaf has a cool touch to it. And there's another example just quickly with my Myrmecophila thomsoniana, a super highlight orchid can take direct sun 364 days a year without any issues whatsoever, except on that very hot day at 39 degrees Celsius and boom, even that one got sunburned and the leaves were hot. So what you can do is if you do catch a leaf that's a little bit hot and you want to be able to make sure that you cool the leaf down to get to it in time and hopefully avoid any cell structure being destroyed if you got to it in time, mist the leaf with room 
temperature water, even to the point a little bit of a, on the warmer side. Do not go in with a cold misting spray bottle or something to cool the leaf down. That will make your cell structure collapse, even if it hadn't collapsed because you'd gotten to the leaf in time. The temperature differentials between a leaf that was exposed to the sun at the point of burning to then get hit by cold water is going to destroy cell structure. It is too aggressive of an approach even though we are in a hurry to correct the problem ASAP and hopefully manage to avoid any damage that maybe the heat of the leaf would incur. So room temperature water will be much cooler than whatever heat the leaf had been subjected to, all right? So that's gonna cool the leaf down. Please don't use cold water. In my instance, I didn't even bother because yeah, my leaf had already turned brown by the time I had seen it. But you see, when we talk about light levels, never mind the visual, go by touch. Watch out for the angle of the sun this time of year if you are growing outdoors at some point in time. Even if you're growing indoors, watch what's going on in your windows. Go by touch. If you've got a non-bloomer and the whole orchid is growing well year after year and it's just not blooming, just stress it a little bit more and give it more light and monitor the temperature of the leaves every 30 minutes. And if they're just not warming up, you know you can increase the light levels even more and keep checking every 30 minutes until you're comfortable with the fact that the leaves are getting warm, but not heating up for the extended time that they are exposed to the light. And when I say light, I include sun. As this was an impromptu video, these were free flow thoughts. <laughs> if you have anything to add to them, leave them in the comments, please. I just thought it was relevant this time of year to get out and talk about our senses, not just the visual, but the sense of touch and how it helps us to protect our orchids so that we don't get to this point. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, what a shame. Hope this was helpful. If you think it would help somebody else, consider sharing the video. That would be awesome. That would help the person and it helps my video and the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. One condition though, that you stay safe, please. Take care, bye.